More and more, college and university students are registered full-time, but are in fact juggling employment that approaches full-time hours itself. This week, how colleges and universities are adapting to better serve the invisible part-time student. Let's take 10 and take a look. The traditional semester system and full-time classroom schedule wasn't developed for the convenience of part-time students. Frankly, I don't think it was designed for the convenience of students at all, but that's another topic for another day. But across North America, there are plenty of examples of institutions adjusting their program delivery in order to cater to working students. Biz schools have undeniable incentive to attract lucrative MBA students, and so we see MBA Before Breakfast programs at Toronto's Rotman and Calgary's Haskane Schools of Business, among others. College students seem to be more night owls than early birds, and so some institutions like Ottawa's Algonquin College have extended their timetables into the evening. Since 2009, regular classroom timetables at Algonquin have been extended until 10 p.m. Monday to Thursday, much to the chagrin of the faculty association. But it could be worse. At the College of Southern Nevada, where else, in Las Vegas, they have piloted night classes that begin at midnight and run until 2 or 3 a.m. Students reportedly love the easy commute and ample parking at that hour and are more awake than they would be in a morning class. Many colleges are using technology to cater to part-time student schedules, allowing them to participate in asynchronous online learning as part of a blended or hybrid curriculum. Once again, it's Algonquin College that has pushed hard to deliver 20% of its full-time programs online in order to free up classroom space. So far, they've reduced the space required per student by almost 40%, saving $80 million in new construction and $2 million a year in operating costs. Blended delivery also makes a full-time program more manageable for a working student. In Canada, the obvious example is Royal Roads University, whose unique model for professional master's degrees includes brief, intense residency periods on campus, followed by largely online instruction. The experience of a week or two on campus, challenged and sleep-deprived, seems to owe something to Royal Roads' history as a military academy and the tradition of a boot camp. The result is remarkable social cohesion within the student cohort and graduates who are passionate about their experience. Brock University uses a similar boot camp model for their so-called super courses. Instead of blended online delivery, students spend an intense two weeks on campus and complete the entire course. They're in class Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They write a quiz every day and a three-hour exam each Saturday. The super courses are team taught to prevent faculty exhaustion, but students complete eight months of work in just two weeks. Aside from residency weeks, some colleges are experimenting with blended delivery to allow students to take a full-time program but spend just one day a week on campus. Volunteer State Community College in Tennessee and Sergeant Reynolds Community College in Virginia have launched Friday-only programs to take advantage of the fact that many of their classrooms were sitting dormant that day. These full-time Friday or Fuel Smart Friday programs allow students to take four full courses with just one day a week on campus. It's a long day, from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., but they can book a single day off work to accommodate their classroom schedule. Similarly, Fanshawe College in London, Ontario launched their weekend college back in 2013, allowing students to take several full-time programs but spend only one weekend a month on campus. Morning, night, and weekend classes are just one approach. Some colleges are rethinking the program model entirely. This year, PEI's Holland College started breaking full-time programs up into single courses that students could take one at a time. This course-based delivery model is expected to appeal to working students who can pick away at a credential over time. A think tank at Stanford University's D School has envisioned one possible future for higher education. They call it the Open Loop University, offering six years of non-linear education instead of four years full-time on campus. Open Loop began the tradition of a college experience that is six years of non-linear residential learning rather than a four-year, one-and-done ramp into the real world. Now a student's path might start on campus, gaining knowledge, learning skills, and building a social network. 
or their path starts in the real world and they return to campus when ready, equipped with the experience and perspective they need to focus on studies. Now, Stanford isn't just a time in your life, it's a lifetime. In Battle Creek, Michigan, Kellogg Community College has gone a step further at its Regional Manufacturing Technology Center. They offer micro-modules to students walking in off the street, with no appointment necessary. For example, a micrometer module worth .13 of a credit hour takes the typical student three hours to complete and costs just $21. Obviously, this is on-demand, computer-based workforce training and I suspect that online options like Khan Academy or lynda.com are likely to be more widely adopted. Here in Canada, Algonquin College has proposed a system of provincial learning units, discrete competency-based modules that could be packaged into courses or taught individually. The advantage is that college students might more readily get transfer credit for portions of courses. And Algonquin calculates the province of Ontario could save $10 million a year in unnecessarily duplicated coursework, not to mention the savings in time and tuition for the students themselves. Even MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has started to consider modular, flexible delivery for its courses. A faculty task force concluded last summer that the very notion of the course may be outdated and that MIT should consider unbundling them into smaller modules. 40% of MIT students surveyed thought it was a great idea, but just 25% of MIT faculty agreed. We may indeed be moving toward what Don Wright, former president at BCIT, called just-in-time human capital development, or what Smith College in Massachusetts described as a world of discontinuous, self-scheduled and customized degrees pursued at a variety of online and face-to-face -face institutions. But coming back to the issue we mentioned at the outset, none of this will help student engagement. Time-shifting classroom work, fragmentation of curriculum, online and blended delivery, all are going to make it more challenging to enhance our NESI results. In fact, a very different model has proven astoundingly successful in Nessie. One institution stands head and shoulders above all others in North America. But that's also a subject for another day. Thanks again for taking 10 with me. I hope you'll take a moment to like this video, to leave a comment, or even to subscribe to this podcast on YouTube, iTunes, or by email. I hope to see you next time, but before you go, check out the new anthem for Simon Fraser University, in case you missed it. Engage the